So can you hear me well enough? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey, there's a song called When from 1928, recorded by Bix with Paul Whiteman. And uh, we're going to play playing all Bix music, some Wolverine, some, uh, some uh, Gold Kid maybe. And um, hope you enjoy that kind of thing. That's why you're here, I hope. All right. On the tenor saxophone, this is Natalie Sharp. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we heard some alto and clarinet from John Otto. Yeah. Yeah. And the piano, the 66, 66-key piano, that's Jeff Barnhart. <laughs> Uh, banjo solo from C.J. Mueller. We're going to play a thing from the Wolverines days back in 1924 called Oh Baby, Don't Say No, Say Maybe. Maybe. That's the trainer's favorite too.
we have Steve Picall. Yes. Yes. And uh, hometown hero Josh Duffy at the drum. Yes. Uh, yeah, 414. <coughs> 414. We're going to play something recorded by Bix with Frank Trumbauer's orchestra back in 1928. It's kind of a vapid pop song, but they did something uh, really beautiful with it. And we're going to play our version of a thing called Lila. And uh, we'll have TJ play some plectrum guitar. Yeah. He brought it, we're going to use it. <laughs> All right. Uh, you guys are on top. Here's our whoa, how about that? Whoa! Big spider back is gone! All right, here's a song recorded by Bix with the Gold Kid Orchestra back in 1926. And uh, I played this with Josh before with his uh, orchestra, but this is a pared down thing from how big was the Gold Kid band in those days? 14? Well, we're seven, so we're half the size. We're doing double the work. This is called Slow River. <laughs>
Salt River. Hey, that's Steve Pacall on the bass doing the Steve uh, Brown yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's do something that was recorded by Bix and his gang. 369. Yeah, Bix made some records under his own name his, you know, for the OK Recording Company and uh, picked guys he really liked from the Whiteman Band. This one he did in 1928, written by uh, J. Russell Robinson and recorded originally by the ODJB back in 1918. This is called Margie, and uh, there's not many notes on this thing, just, uh, just the intro. Yeah? All right, here we go, Margie. <laughs> just the intro, like the silent cowboy at the end. Dog leg.
Well, for today we're called the Wolverines. We'll do some more Wolverines music for you right now from uh, 1924. This is a song. We actually played it last night at the, uh, the tap, but this is the uh, recording arrangement. And, uh, I think arranged by Bix himself, more or less. Uh, they used to do what he called the huddle method, which is Bix didn't really write music out. What he did is he'd, he'd run the piano and he'd say, you play that note, you play that note, and then just memorize that. And that's how he wrote, he wrote charts. This is a thing uh, called Susie, and we're going to feature a little bit of uh, tenor saxophone work by Natalie Scharf. Here we go. That's Susie. All right. Uh, would you guys want to do one just for fun? Sure, sure. Let's do a uh, 279. I'd like to feature our fine uh, read section on uh, this next one, and I'll take a little bit of a break. Um, all three of us playing the Cellar Boys. You'll see us a little later on tonight at the casino. This is John Otto on clarinet, as you know. Yeah. And we just heard Nelly Sharp on tenor saxophone. This is thing that Pix recorded with Frank Trumbar back in 1929, bit of an obscurity. And uh, I always like this song. This is called Wait Till You See My Cherie.
Surprise vocal by Jeff Barnes. I was surprised yeah. myself. <laughs> okay. Let's do a three three eight. Three three eight. It's only melody like the record. By the way, I didn't have time to uh, bring some drum parts, so Josh is doing the off the cuff. Thanks, Josh. He knows all the records anyway. Oh so. uh, yeah, backwards and forwards. We're going to play something that is uh, really reduced. This is from the uh, Paul Whiteman Orchestra. They had, what, 30 people? <laughs> Next year we'll do Sousa, maybe, or something like that. <laughs> That's a thing called Lonely Melody, and it, Bix did this back in 1927. One of his first things he did with the orchestra, and this is the first Bix 78 I ever got, and I wore that thing out in the Victrola in about a month. So. This is adapted from Melody by Grunfeld, and no one's ever seemed to find that thing. We don't know what that, oh, I don't know. Vince so, has it. Does he? Yeah. All right. Damn it, Vince. He's got everything. <laughs> All right, here we go. Lonely Melody. <laughs>
going to feature John Otto on a vocal. Why not? Let's play a thing that Bix did with, uh, was it both Trumbauer, was it both Trumbauer and Weidman, My Pet? No, that's, yeah. is it both? Or is it, I don't know. We'll play My Pet in the key of E flat. Is that all right? That sounds good. I'll get through that. Whatever. All right, here we go, My Pet. Let me do a mic check. Oh, yeah, it's loud. Mic check. Mic check. I get it. Okay. <clears throat> One, two. Testing. Testing. Let's go. <laughs> of it when well, she's got these and those and this my pet told me cutely i'm set absolutely so i get plenty pet from my pet
Ohio with Mike at 1928. All right. Let's slow it down and do a thing that Bix did uh, at, toward the end of his career, back in 1930. He made a series of records under his own name, Bix, better back in his orchestra. And this one featured, let's see, Benny Goodman on the clarinet, as well as Gene Krupa on the drums. Kind of a foreshadowing was coming up the next decade, and we're going to have Josh play the uh, bombastic Gene Krupa part. This is uh, a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not, not by your wrist, though. No, no. <laughs> yeah. 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 Would it be all right to have the vocal? If you want to do it, nice. sure. Yeah. yeah. And Three. it's just piano and bass, I think, there. Okay. So, and maybe drums. I'll just do it all a cappella acoustic. A cappella acoustic. All right. This is called I'll Be a Friend with Pleasure. Just like Wes Vaughn, Jeff Barnard on the vocals. Yeah. You get that table on every gig, that's pretty cool. A, a, a workstation. I'm going to take it with me. <laughs> that's the biggest trap table. You know, uh, three, five, nine. Well, the Cellar Boys, when we have our regular group back home, we play at a place called the Honky Tonk Barbecue and we play at the Green Mill. And, uh, there's a song we're doing right now that I always want to do this on the dancing, but we can't do it. There's no room, but I think we're going to try to do it today. This is a thing called Big Boy, recorded by Bix with the Wolverine Orchestra back in 1924. And um, 
as you might know, Bix also played the piano, and he played the piano solo on this one. So let's see if we can switch. You want to try to do it? That sounds good to me. All right. I knew you'd be up for it. You're up for anything. As long as I don't have to play Bix's cornet or something. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea I'm going to get there. I'm going to trip over the stand. And then... Maybe a railing kill. I'll probably, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to say yes. All right, we're going to work it out. This is called Big Point. Um, I think what I'm going to do. I believe he'll be approaching from the left. So I'll go left. Yes, I think I'm going to put my stand. We're going to stay here. Here's one that you've all heard uh, many times, Singing the Blues. It's the recording arrangement from 1927, and Frank Trumbauer's orchestra had uh, Bix in the cornet, of course, and had Jimmy Dorsey on the clarinet, and Trumbauer on the C melody saxophone. And this is called, like I said, Singing the Blues. And um, here's a little story. We have a friend in from uh, Germany, Klaus Jacobi. He's uh, one of the musical directors for Whitley Bay uh, Jazz Party. And one year we did a Paul Whiteman uh, tribute concert, and. Uh, with the original music, uh, handwritten stuff, and on the bottom of the Sing of the Blues Whiteman chart, there was a coda, uh, an ending of the song that's not recorded, and 
Perhaps Bix wrote it, I don't know, but it sounds like Bixian. So we've included it here on this arrangement and uh, hope you enjoy it. It's a little obscurity for you. Here we go, Singing the Blues. I took pictures of it before I left. <laughs> We can even play in an hour. So let's see. Let's play uh, another Wolverine's thing for you. Three, three, one. This is one of the, I think, one of the best Wolverine sides they made, and uh, arranged by Picks, of course, I think. And uh, this was transcribed for us by David Bodinghouse. Is David here right now or not? No. We can screw it up. <laughs> It was written by uh, Chicago band leader Ted Fiorito, and uh, not too many bands recorded this. I'm not sure why they caught on to this song, but I'm glad they did. This is called I Need Some Pet.
right, time for just one more this afternoon, but thanks for coming out. Well, we got favorite shops for the rest of the weekend. I, mean, I, got, I got somewhere between 40 and 100 sets to play this weekend. All right, let's go once around the band. On the piano and vocals, that's Jeff Barnard. On the alto saxon clarinet, John Otto. On the tenor saxon clarinet, just a little bit of clarinet, that's Natalie Scharf. On the Putram banjo and Putram guitar, T.J. Mueller. And on the string bass, that's Steve Pickall. On the drums and cymbals, that's Josh Duffy. My name is Andy Shum. Thanks for coming out to the Putnam. And uh, it's an honor to play Bix's horn once again, so thanks for uh, being a great audience. We're going to play one more that Bix recorded back in 1927 with Frank Trumbauer. And uh, we'll put the charts away and just play this old favorite. This is called Clarinet Marmalade. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you later yes. on tonight. Yes. Uh, straight out the end. No, no intro then. All right, straight out the end.
Thanks a lot. We'll see you later tonight at the casino, and uh, we appreciate you being a great audience. Thanks a lot.